Hey everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Knights of the Alternate Table. And once again, with me, Simon, the Knight of the Alternate Table. Now, thank you for 50 subs, and this is kind of a special, which is why we're not doing part 3 of What If George Washington Became King. So may I present to you, What If Mexico Won the Mexican-American War? And just thank you for everyone subscribing, I really appreciate it. And let's hopefully get to 100. Thank you. So, why would Mexico win the Mexican-American War? Well, the first step to a Mexican victory was for Congress to see James K. Polk directly engaging the war as a breach of his executive branch powers. So he would be kicked out of office and his vice president, Dallas, would take charge of becoming president. Now, James K. Polk was a key figure in the Mexican-American War, and he was really the one who helped push the military to a win and quickly take over all the towns. The next step for Mexican victory in the Mexican-American War was for New Mexico, especially California, to embrace their culture as Mexican instead of I don't care whatever. So it would be harder for the Americans to successfully take California from them, and the Bear Revolt would quickly be crushed as they would identify as Mexicans more than Americans. This would be the same through most of New Mexico, but especially California as they had the largest population at the time. So, with the borders of the area that they properly controlled set, it totally looks like this. And, once it does, they would be ready to start their invasion of the United States, and the United States would be ready to start their invasion of Mexico. Now, Mexico had a weaker navy than the US, so all of the naval battles would remain the same, as there is no way a Mexican navy could beat the American navy in the Mexican-American War, even if they ended up winning it. The uprising of John C. Fremont and Kit Carson would quickly be crushed, with Kit Carson managing to escape to round up Union forces like he did in our timeline, and John C. Fremont completely just being destroyed. This would be a major loss for America, as he still had his map on him and his supplies of cartography. So, the US wouldn't know the land to survey as they go through New Mexico and try and navigate the land on their own. U.S. forces would quickly have to fight against Mexican militia and new Mexican militia as well, and it would be harder for them to fight as a town, as they would be united under their identity as Mexicans and not care whoever they're part of as a widespread town. So instead of a bloodless campaign like it was in our timeline, this would be a very bloody campaign for Union forces, as they would have to face many militia and they would begin to push into U.S. In our timeline, Vice President Dallas was the main pusher for Polk to invade Mexico through Texas as they saw that that was the key structure and the where the main war would be fought, hence the city of Dallas named after him. But in our timeline, President Dallas will see Texas as the absolute necessity and would pour most of the Union resources, hurting the fact that they are already losing in New Mexico and can't send more troops as they're in Texas. Dallas, loving Texas, would keep most of his forces in there, fortifying it so there would be little progress made by the Mexican army. Meanwhile in the north, though, Mexican militias and the Mexican ar army would push thoroughly, as it was easier and quicker as the Union forces would be exhausted from the long marches and the bloody town-to-town -to -town fighting. Meanwhile, a naval invasion would happen near Mexico City, though it would be only a matter of time before the Marines were crushed by Santa Ana. Mexico wouldn't go past the 42nd parallel into Oregon country, as technically that was disputed between the British and America, even though James K. Polk would have treaties with the British to grant that territory to America, he did at the same time as going into the Mexican-American War. So, the British would pull back all deals when James K. Polk is ousted. The Mexicans would not even try and invade Oregon country as that could possibly spark a war with the British and Canada. After a devastating battle at Salt Antonio, the Union forces would be crushed and be forced to be a ragtag army, retreating and trying to make little stands. Meanwhile, in the US, the rest of New Mexico would start taking more land more and more. They would reach lack of resistance as most Americans would be fed up with the war and would be okay under whoever as patriotism slowly gets destroyed. 
Meanwhile, Americans trying to invade through Oregon country would quickly be defeated and cut off by not British forces, as trying to start a new front would be against British interests, as they would have made a number of treaties with Mexico to share the continent instead of be rivals like the US and Canada was. This would overall benefit the British if the Mexicans won this Mexican-American war. More land would be taken away from the Marines during their naval invasion, though it would be a quick and hard fight. Meanwhile, with the Union Army destroyed, more and more land would be going towards Mexico. They were no longer below Oregon country, so the Mexicans would quickly go up through and go to north quickly and try and take all states and no possibilities of a northern battle. Meanwhile, in the east, they would take Louisiana. The U.S. losing most of its armies would quickly surrender, as they would have no more forces to even try and fight Mexico, and the ones they did would quickly be crushed with the growing Mexican empire that Santa Ana was slowly creating. So, America would surrender to keep some of its armies and some of its navies still intact without it being completely destroyed, so it might fight another war if it comes down to it. The Treaty of Santa Fe, as it was one of the areas primarily fought over, would be signed, giving Mexico the land from the Mississippi River over and a little bit more, as they would take land for lakes in Michigan territory in modern day to try and get back to, into the trade. Meanwhile, the British would take New York for its industrial and Oregon County and a little bit more for helping out in the war. The U.S. would be left in ruins. Santa Ana would be seen as the hero of Mexico, as he successfully took down the greedy wealthy Americans who tried and hurt them. So, Mexico would make Santa Ana the president for life, or emperor, and Santa Ana would keep the military closely besides him, so there would be no revolts and no killings of him as there was many previous presidents. He would truly live forever. The issue of slavery and whether or not states could succeed from the Union would still come up in this timeline, only it would be even more so, as more cities and states would want to flee, but it wouldn't divide all of them. But they would see the government as a weak thing that lost to a struggling nation such as Mexico. And, but overall, more states and more people would want to leave the Union and make their own country a better one. So, with the state succeeding, the Union would face. Virginia would instantly be divided, as the Virginian government would more identify with the lines of the federal government, as they were no longer more industrious as them. I don't believe Lincoln would be elected, but a random other president. So, since this would happen so e earlier in the century than it did in our timeline, and would overall break the Union. The Union would focus on trying and destroy the friends on each side instead of focusing in the center, as they wanted to take any possible capitals that the CSA might put up, but this would cost heavy troops as most of their army would be defeated and they would have to rely on militia. Meanwhile, the CSA would try and attack Ohio more and take Washington DC to divide the Union and cripple their government to overall hurt and bring a quick close to the war. Now, with the South having more troops and more professional as they would be experienced, unlike what happened to the Union Army being quickly destroyed in the number of battles, would easily destroy the Union militia, with the Union completely giving hope on the Western Front and trying to defend Washington, D.C. from the oncoming Southern Horde. They would try and fight, but overall, they would have to surrender. The Union defeat would be quick and painless due to the fact that Mexico and Great Britain would all be supporting the Confederates, the Britain for the Confederate land and the cotton, while the Mexicans would want a strong puppet and ally in North America to completely control the continent with them and their allies in case the British ever decided to go to war with them. So, with a firm puppet in the CSA, the American and federal government 
would surrender. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and getting me up to 50 subscribers. I'm trying a new mic out, so I hope you guys like it. But yeah, so pretty fun video. Um, no one voted in the poll, and most people aren't subscribing. So if you made it this far, then wow, congratulations. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe, because that would be pretty cool. Hope the next subscriber special will be at 100. So that will be pretty fun. So thanks to you, everyone, for watching, and bye. Wow, what a great video. I bet you guys are thinking, holy cow, I made it this far, why not subscribe and hit that notification bell? And hey look, there's your opportunity to subscribe right now, and here's another playlist based on my most recent video, and another one on the one that you would like to watch the best, so bye!